math time and it's in our third part of our three-part series. Today we're going to talk about three-dimensional shapes. Now, two-dimensional shapes, you cut it out, you lay it flat, it stands flat or sets flat on the desk. Now, with three-dimensional shapes, they rise up into the air. So let's talk about three-dimensional shapes. In our classroom, when we talk three-dimensional shapes, we talk about different properties. One, we got to know the name. The second thing is, is they have faces, the flat parts of the three-dimensional shape. And then we talk about edges. In three-dimensional shapes, they're edges and not sides. And again, they have vertices. I've drew, I have drawn our three-dimensional shapes up here on my anchor chart, on my poster board. And let's look at the different three-dimensional shapes. And then I'm going to talk to you about a way to figure out faces, edges, and vertices. If you ever kind of get stumped, you know, let's say you know the face and you know the uh, vertices, but you can't figure out the edges. I'm going to give you a strategy that you can uh, learn and help you figure out the faces, edges, and vertices. But let's look at all these shapes. <clears throat> now, when you're drawing this first one, it is very difficult because it just looks like a circle. So then you can see I put dotted lines to show that this would be like a basketball. Now in our classroom, we don't call it a ball. It is called a sphere. A dice would be an example of this next three-dimensional shape, which is a cube. You see these in our classroom using Kleenexes. Um, they come out of that box. This is actually called a rectangular prism. If you're hungry and you want some ice cream, you're going to get it in a cone. If you're going out and uh, you're buying cans of vegetables, sometimes cans of fruit or uh, soup, this is a soup can. It's known as a cylinder. And our last three-dimensional shape that we have is called a pyramid. Now, faces, edges, and vertices. I always teach this. Um, not that we uh, absolutely use it um, in our classroom, but I always talk about it. Euler's theory. Euler's theory is a method to help us figure out faces, vertices, and edges. So I've used F is for face plus V, which are vertices or the points, equal edges minus 2. So when you add your faces and vertices together, that's going to give you a sum and then you're going to subtract 2 to get the number of edges. For example, I used the cube's properties to show you the way that I did this. So, a cube has six flat areas that it would stand in the, into the air. So those are called faces. A cube has six faces, and then you have four points up top and four points down at bottom, which those are called vertices. That is 8. So I do 6 plus 8. And that equals 14. Now, 14 is not the number of edges because I have to remember to subtract 2. So when I do that, 14 minus 2 gets me my final property for edges, which is 12 edges. So faces plus vertices, 6 plus 8 equals 14. Subtract that 2 to get 12 for your edges. That is Euler's theory. Now, let's come back to this when I have it all completed and filled out. Now I'm back and I have this completely filled out. We've got the names, sphere, cube, rectangular, prism, cone, cylinder, and we got a pyramid on back. Now, the faces, those are the flat parts. If I lay it on a table without rolling, will it stand flat in the air? A sphere does not have any faces. A cube has six, a rectangular prism has six, a cone has one, a cylinder has two, and then the pyramid itself also has five faces. Now, before I keep flipping back and forth, we got edges. Think of edges as the straight lines, the sides, but they have to be straight. And then you think of vertices. Vertices are like the point where three edges come together to form a point is how it is defined. So as we look at the properties of a sphere, a sphere has zero faces, zero edges, and zero vertices. That ball that I have in my classroom, you could take it and you could roll it, and it would just keep rolling because there's no straight lines. It's all curved. There's no points that would stop it, and it doesn't technically 
lay flat on the ground without moving. So, sphere zero everywhere. A cube. A cube has six faces. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight vertices or points. And then if you count the number of lines, straight lines, that form edges, that's 12. One thing that I always tell my kids, I'm like, if you know the properties of a cube or you know the properties of a rectangular prism, then you know the other. Because a cube and a rectangular prism have the exact same properties. Rectangular prism has six faces, it has 12 edges, and it has eight vertices. Now, the cone, the cone is a little different because the cone does have a face. If I was taking my cone and I laid it straight down on this circle part, then it would lay on, the, on my table and go into the air. However, the cone does not have any straight line. It's all round, so it doesn't have any edges. And we don't call this point an actual vertice. It is called an apex. So I wrote here one, but it's an, it's because it's called an apex. So the, the cone's um, point is actually an apex. For a cylinder, a cylinder has two faces, a top and a bottom. It does not have any points. So vertices are zero. And for edges, for edges, it is also zero because a cone is round there are no straight lines so we are going to classify that as zero edges and as we look at our pyramid the pyramid we are talking about uses a square base or bottom and then it uses a point up top in the air and we draw it so the pyramid has five faces the base of the face is made up of a square and then the sides up top of the pyramid are made up of triangles. So four triangles and then the base is a square. How many vertices? Well, you've got one, two, three, four vertices on the bottom of the base and then up at the top where you have that point you also have another vertice. So that is making five. So one, two, three, four and then five five vertices. If you count the edges or the straight lines that go together to form those vertices, you end up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight. There you have it, guys. Those are your properties of your three-dimensional shapes. Be able to draw them, name them, tell me how many faces, how many edges, and how many vertices there are. We don't have anything to do besides some Zern today for homework. Happy Thursday, no application problem today. Only thing you have for math is Zern and you only have to do Zern for 10 minutes today. Enjoy your math time and happy Thursday. Activity and challenge time. They call me Honest Dave. No, your activity and challenge today is Two videos. I'm going to share a video of just a short biography of Abraham Lincoln and then because we were going to go to the Lincoln Boyhood National Park, you're going to have a virtual field trip to the Lincoln Boyhood National Park. So two videos, Abraham Lincoln and he was one of the tallest presidents. Honest Abe says have fun with your activities. We've come to our time where we're ready for our special message. So special message today is brought to you by Mrs. Wiseman. Let's see what Mrs. Wiseman has to say. Hey guys, it's Miss Wiseman. I hope all of you are doing good and staying healthy. I miss all of you. I hope that you enjoy your summer and get lots of playing time outside. And I wish all of you well. Welcome back for another adventure of Jack and Annie. We are on tonight of the Titanic, Chapter 2. Let's see what happens. The unsinkable ship. Orf! Orf! Jack opened his eyes. He shivered. Wherever they were now, it was cold. Very cold. Teddy barked again. Shh! said Jack. 
Annie shined the flashlight on her clothes. Wow, we're dressed like old-fashioned kids, she said. Instead of pajamas and a poncho, she wore a sailor's dress and a long wool cloak. Jack had on an overcoat, knee-length pants with a long socks. His backpack had turned to leather. He also had on a shirt and a tie. Where are we? He wondered aloud. Jack and Annie looked out the window. The moonless sky glittered with stars. There was a soft wind and the sound of water lapping. The treehouse seemed to be resting on a wooden deck between two giant columns. Jack looked up and saw smoke coming out of the columns. We must have landed on the ship between the smokestacks, he said. Then Jack looked straight ahead and saw a box high in the air, near the front of the ship. That must be the lookout's nest, he said. Jack sat back in the treehouse and opened their book. Annie handed him the flashlight. Let's find out where we are now, he said. He turned to a picture of a huge ocean liner. By the light of the flashlight, he read, Late at night on April 14, 1912, an English ocean, ocean liner was making her first voyage across the Atlantic Ocean. She was going to New York City. Carrying 2,200 passengers, the ship was four city blocks long. Most people believe the ship was unsinkable. Oh man, we're in 1912, said Jack. He pulled out his notebook and he wrote, April 14, 1912. The ship is huge, said Annie. How will we ever find the gift? Find the gift to help free Teddy. You can't go looking for a gift, said Jack. You have to wait until someone gives it to you. Right, said Annie with a sigh. Well, I guess we must have to be ourselves, like Morgan said. And maybe we'll get lucky. This is hard, said Jack. The little dog whined. Don't worry, Teddy, said Annie. We'll free you from your spell. Just then a shout came from the lookout's nest. Iceberg ahead! Jack and Annie turned back to the window, just in time to see a huge iceberg looming out of the sea. The iceberg was dark with a fringe of white at the top, and it was right in front of the ship. Jack felt a jolt. Then he heard a grinding sound. The ship was scraping against the mountain of ice. Orf! Orf! Teddy barked. Shh! Don't be scared, said Annie. She picked the dog up and hugged him. The scraping sound stopped. The ship slid past the iceberg until they lost sight of it. The night was calm again. See, Annie said to Teddy, it was just a little bump. This ship is unsinkable. But Jack was worried. Wait, I have to read more about this, he said. Don't read it now, Jack, said Annie. It's time to get the gift. Come on, Teddy. She picked up the little dog and the flashlight, and she climbed out the treehouse window. Hey, don't take the flashlight, said Jack, but Annie was gone. Annie! Annie! called Jack. He heard a soft Yikes! Annie stuck her head back in the treehouse. Bad news, she said in a whisper. I think you better see this. Jack threw his stuff into his knapsack. He put it on and climbed out the window. Annie was standing by the ship's railing holding, holding Teddy. Without a word, she shined the flashlight on a life preserver hanging from the railing. In big black letters were the root words, R.M.S. Titanic. And that takes me to chapter 3. S.O.S. Wait until Tuesday to see what happens. Happy reading. Homework recap, guys. Reading. Today you got Abraham Lincoln questions. You can find those on Google Forms. And tonight and the rest of the weekend, read for 30 minutes. In writing today, you got your journal entry, and then you are going to get on Google Forms again, and you're going to just describe what that poem was about. What, when you heard me read it, what did you think about? What did you visualize? In math, math was going over three-dimensional shapes. Only thing you got to do is zern, and you only have to do zern for 10 minutes. Your activity and challenge, you have an Abraham Lincoln biography video that you're going to watch, and then you're going to take a virtual trip virtual field trip to the Lincoln Boyhood National Park. So, that's your homework. Guys, you have been with me this week. You have seen special guests. You've got special messages. We've done some reading. We've done some writing. We've done some math. The most important thing is, is that you know that I'm missing you and I'm thinking about you. I hope that you're doing well. I've taken you through everything that I can today. It was pretty fast and we're done. So that leads us to our weekend. I hope that you enjoy it and that the weather's nice and that you're able to do something exciting. But until Tuesday, guys, you know what I need to say. That's a wrap. See you later.